Today you will learn how to decide on solutions for identified risks using the principles from the hierarchy of controls. Hello and welcome to the Progress Safety Bits, today with the hierarchy of controls. My name is Christopher Spalek and I support you on achieving your HSE vision. Occupational safety is often connected with costs. This is especially true for organizations which are in a reactive approach to safety. In this situation, personal protective equipment or signs are very appealing. They address the risks and they are cheap. But low-cost solutions regularly are less effective and should only be taken into account if other approaches are not reasonable. The hierarchy of controls describes the preferred sequence of the actions. The priority is to eliminate the risk totally. Can the task with the risk be avoided completely? A change in the process or optimization are possible answers. An example could be automatic transportation from one machine to another with a conveyor belt, eliminating the need for manual movement and avoiding the ergonomic risk connected. Substitution should be your second thought. Can a chemical substance be replaced by another one, even if the connected task might take more time? For example, cleaning agents. You might replace a high-risk item by a low-risk substance. Or in ergonomics, you can change the packaging size and by that reduce the weight which needs to be lifted in a single movement. If the hazard still exists and cannot be replaced, technical solutions or engineering controls should be considered. Mechanical hazards usually require safeguards. Chemical hazards might be addressed with an adequate suction or ventilation system. After engineering controls, administrative measures should be the next thing on your list. You can do this by reducing the exposure by working less time in the effective area or conducting tasks like fumigation only when no people are present. Signing can trigger actions like keeping distance or performing a certain behavior, but don't underestimate the time required for an effective training. Making administrative measures work can be a significant workload, and this includes the need to train new employees to cover the natural turnover of an organization. My safety bit on rules goes deeper into it. Personal protective equipment is the last approach, including hearing protection for noise areas, chemical protection gloves for chemicals, filter masks, fall arrestors, safety glasses, and many more. Using PPE means that the employee is directly exposed to the hazard. Only the PPE protects her from the consequences of contact or incident. This puts a high demand on the quality of the PPE, the training and the understanding of the user. Finally, you have to enforce wearing PPE whenever required. The effectiveness of the safeguard shrinks with each step down this hierarchy. And in parallel, the workload to keep the solution effective and in place goes up. A replaced hazard is still a hazard. A missing or wrongly installed safeguard exposes the employee to the hazard again. An administrative measure is only as effective as it is enforced, including training and controlling. And PPE means it has to be adequate, intact and worn whenever required. There is surely a place to use signing or PPE when addressing significant risks but they should be temporarily and connected with administrative measures, especially in effective training. Let's summarize. The focus should be on eliminating hazards entirely or to substitute them. Only if this is not possible, use engineering controls before you decide on administrative actions or PPE. The effectiveness of the measure goes down every level and therefore effective safety measures should be chosen from the higher level of this hierarchy. What are your ideas? Leave a comment, subscribe, write me a message, or just give me a call. More on progress.com slash HCCT. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.